I love history. If you've been following my YouTube channel, you know that not only do I love history, I love memory training. And so I'm doing a series of videos where I take old memory books, I tell you what I learned from them, what I like about it, and what I don't like about them. I actually have an old memory book club where you can watch all of these videos and you can download free copies of these books written hundreds of years ago. This book, published in the year 1813, over 200 years old, is the product of a series of lectures given by Gregor von Feingold. He was born in 1760 and this book was published when he was 53 years old. He was a memory expert at the time and he would go around and he would speak on memory. At one point in 1807 some of his students, 12 to 15 of his students, even did, did a memory demonstration where the audience gave them information and they repeated the information that was given to them by the audience. So he made quite a name for himself. One of the things that really stands out about this book is not only is it a memory book that teaches memory training, he also gives the history of memory training, which a lot of books do. A lot of books though tell the story of Simonides, who lived in, in Greece and in 477 BC developed memory training. Uh, that's a story that Cicero wrote about in one of our books in the Old Memory Book Club, and several of the authors in the Old Memory Book Club have written about Simonides. But what Gregor von Feingl does is he gives you some memory experts who lived in the 1200s, the 1300s, the 1400s. It's very exciting to read about memory experts who lived in, in those years because very rarely can you find any information on them. So it's a great history of the teachers of memory, but it all, he also teaches memory training. Now in this particular video, I'm only gonna review the first chapters of this book, and I'll do the other chapters in other videos. In chapter one, he teaches something known as the mind palace or the memory palace. Now this is a method developed in 477 in Greece by Simonides. Here's the premise of it. You imagine a map of a house to memorize anything. Now before you think, oh Ron, I've heard this before, I'm gonna shut this video off. Don't go anywhere. He actually does something different that I've never heard with the mind palace. Let's say you wanna memorize a list of items. You imagine yourself walking through a room and in the first spot in the room there's a chair and the first word you want to remember is a dog so you imagine a dog in that chair the next thing that you see in the room is a trash can well the next word you want to remember is water so you imagine a glass of water being dumped in the trash can then to remember the items you go back to the chair there's a dog you go back to the trash can and you remember a glass of water and he talks about how our memory will remember something if we associate it with something else he talks about if you see a house you will automatically remember the people that live in that house or if you see a book you will automatically remember the contents of the book he will tell you that if you can remember the first word on a page of a book often it will remind you of what comes next on that page so he talks about how we can our memory we can associate it with other things which leads him into the mind palace of the memory palace which is where you memorize information in locations in a room his twist on it though was a little bit different and I'll tell you why I liked it and why I didn't like it he said in a room it has four walls he said, well, number five spots on each wall. What I like to teach is you number five spots in a room. Five spots in a room, then you go to the next room. Five spots in that room. Instead, he says, put five spots on a wall. Well, a wall is just a blank wall if there's no pictures or paintings on it. So he says to imagine there's a letter M on the wall. And now you put the number one at the bottom of the M on the left, and on the top, you put the number two, the three, the four, the five. Now you have five locations on that wall or five compartments. If you go to the next wall and you imagine another M there, that wall would be six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 in the same pattern. So in that room, you could have 20 locations, four walls, five locations per wall in this M pattern. But then he goes on to say, well, that's not gonna give you enough locations. So you need to expand it. And instead of imagining five locations per wall, imagine nine or 10 and number them this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put nine or 10 on a wall. That way you could have 36 or 40 locations per room. He then suggests maybe this M pattern isn't the best way to memorize something. And in other words, here's what you would do. The first word you would want to memorize 
if it was a dog, like in our previous example, you would imagine the dog at the bottom of that M. If the next thing you want to remember is a glass of water, well, at the top of the wall, there's a glass of water. So now the dog runs up to the top of the top of the wall to the top of the M and he gets the glass of water. So really what he's suggesting you do is you use a wall and locations on a wall. Then whatever you want to memorize you see as a picture and create a story. And this story is interacting with that wall in that M pattern. He even offers another option where you don't have to use an M pattern, but you could just do it in horizontal rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's the first wall. The second wall, instead of starting with the number 10, you put the 10 above the wall at, on the ceiling and then below it 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This enables the 6 to be in the same spot on every wall, the far right column in the middle. In this way, you could have 40 locations on a wall before you go anywhere. Let me tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. So he gives the example of you have nine words to memorize. Apple, monkey, man, ship, pipe, cap, tankard, boat, tree. Let's just take the first three words. So he would imagine in the first spot there, you imagine an apple. The, a monkey takes the apple and he offers it to a man. So here's what I like about this method and what I don't like about this method. What I like about this method is that he is using the mind palace or the memory palace. You're using a room to memorize data. What do I not like about this method? I don't think that seeing it in a pattern on a wall is really the most concrete way to remember the items. I would much prefer to number five spots in a room and see the information on top of those five spots. In other words, actual spots like a trash can or a chair or a window or a desk instead of just imagine them in a pattern in a wall. But what I do like about this is that he uses the story method where you're connecting one item to the next. I do really like that. I like that he is using the story method where you link items together and he's combining that with the mind palace or the memory palace where you use locations in a room. I often do this myself. If I have a list of words I want to remember and on the first piece of furniture I have an apple and on the next piece of furniture I imagine a monkey and on the next piece of furniture I imagine a man, that's pretty strong. But if I have them interacting with each other like the monkey reaches over to piece of furniture number one and grabs the apple and the man reaches over to that piece of furniture and grabs it from the monkey. If I'm having the objects on the furniture interact with other objects on different pieces of furniture, it strengthens it in my memory. So in that sense, I like a lot what he is doing here. So this is chapter one of the book. He suggests you use the mind palace method, which I do too. He suggests you number your locations in your mind palace as numbers on a wall in an M pattern or in horizontal rows. I don't recommend that. Personally, I don't like that. I like seeing real furniture. So guys, the memory system, this enables you to memorize a list of words by seeing them in locations around a room. Make them stronger by having them interacting with each other as Gregor von Feingel suggests. Now, what could this be useful for? Well, let's say that you have to give a speech in your history class and you need to give your speech on a historical person. Take five or 10 characteristics about that historical person, create pictures for them, and then imagine them on five or 10 pieces of furniture around your house. Then whenever you get up in front of your class to give the speech, just take a journey through your house and talk about what you see on the furniture. It's using the technique that Gregor von Feingel talks about here and how he suggests you make your mind palace stronger. This is a huge book and there is even more information in chapter one that I have not had a chance to get to in this video. So I'm gonna do another video and more videos on this book, but if you wanna download this entire book and all the old memory books that I'm reviewing, click the link down below in the description and you can join the old memory book club, it's free, and see what these memory books are teaching. If you like what I'm doing with these old memory books, give me a thumbs up. I would love it if you subscribe because I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these so you want to get notified of these old memory books. And also, I have a memory course known as Black Belt Memory. If you want to get my memory course, Black Belt Memory, click the link down below in the description. I'll see you on the next video.